Hello and welcome. A long time ago I bought a nice PC about which I wanted to make a restoration video. As so often it turned out to be dead due to a leaky battery. There were a lot of SMD parts and damaged traces which needed to be repaired. Usually I rely on my eyes and sometimes I use a magnifying glass or this camera which has an outstanding macro mode. However, it was not very comfortable due to the small screen and so I decided to look for a microscope. Accidentally, the company Endonstar contacted me and offered one of their microscopes for a review. Until now I always refused to make product reviews, but since I was searching for a microscope anyway, I decided to give it a chance and accepted the offer. The first thing which we can find in the package is a quick how-to with some pictures explaining how to build up the microscope. This doesn't look to be too complicated. And here is the actual manual. The exact model of the microscope is Andon Star AD246S-M. There are two models in this series. The 246S is equipped with 7-inch display and 249S is with 10-inch display. I think otherwise they are equal. The manual is in English and there you have two links where you uh, once again will find the videos about how to set up the microscope. On the right you see all the parts which are included in the package. We will come back to it later. And on the left there is a table with some specifications. Obviously we can select different resolutions between um, HD at 120Hz and Ultra HD at 24Hz. I would say high refresh rate is not really necessary in my case, since I'm going to use it only for PCB analysis and soldering and there should be no fast moving objects. What else? MP4 is the recording format, various lenses, JPEG, photos, micro SD cards, where the photos and videos can be saved onto, PC support for Windows. The manual is very detailed, to be honest. Not only does it contain all the overview information, it also explains different lenses. Digital zoom, how to record videos and pictures, how to play back recorded files and more. It also describes the software, which I will not use, since it is for Windows and I have no Windows machine at home. I could mess around with Wine on Linux to get it running there, but I don't think that it, this software is something I need. The manual seems to be only in English, but I think the device is pretty much self-explaining, so you will barely need a manual at all. The monitor is delivered with some display protection. The buttons are nice to push, they feel very clicky and direct. The housing feels hollow and very light, but that is probably intentionally to reduce the weight. The build quality is not posh, but it doesn't feel bad as well. The sensor with the lens is mounted directly to the monitor and can be flipped. There is already one lens in place, 12mm to 320mm distance to the object. It looks exactly like something what I need. On the top there is a mini HDMI port to connect it to an external monitor, a micro USB port to power the microscope and to connect it to the computer if you need to, and then there are some LEDs and micro SD card slot for all the recordings. As I said, this is a model AD246S, which has 7 inch display and I think it has a perfect size. What else do we have in the box? 32GB micro SD card, 5 volts 2 amps USB power supply, an infrared remote control, some glass plates with samples to look at, pine stem, skin of an onion, honeybee wing, honeybee worker leg, and an eye of a housefly. Those are some nice examples if you want to take a look at it with your children. I had some similar examples and an optical microscope as I was a child and I spent hours watching through it at tiny things, like those ones. But even if it is very interesting, looking at insects is not what I need this microscope for. And for the samples there is an additional platform with integrated LED backlight 
where you can put the glass plates onto. That light is very important since it is all about light when using the microscope. Again, I'm not going to use this, but uh, it's a nice add-on if you have kids at home or want to use the microscope to analyze biological samples. And if you want, there is one transparent plastic box for even more samples. There are also some replacement screws, an angled micro USB cable, another box with two lenses, I will come back to it later, Mini HDMI to HDMI cable is included as well. And on the bottom there is of course the actual stand for the microscope. The base part has two LEDs on flexible necks. They are powered through the port on the back. There is a split cable which connects to the base um, to power the LEDs and the other end with micro USB connector goes into the microscope and the third end into the USB wall power supply. The split cable goes through a remote control which has three buttons, two of which control the brightness of the LEDs on the base and the third one is on off button which does not only control the LEDs but I'll come back to it later. The setup is super easy, the vertical stand has to be screwed into the base. By the way, my sample was delivered with some scratches, but that of course doesn't impact the microscope in any way. On top of the vertical stand comes the beam, just like that. On the stand there is a small ring which acts as a limiter, so the microscope wouldn't go below that point. This is a nice thing, since when working with the microscope and adjusting the height, the microscope could slip down the stand and smash on top of the sample which you are trying to look at. This could potentially damage the sample and the lens, so the protective ring could be a good rescue in such cases. And here is the first negative point. The base platform and the beam are not very long and designed for smaller parts. When working with bigger PCBs you have to arrange it somehow to get every corner under the lens. Why this is a big problem, I'll show you later. The joint where vertical stand was connected to the beam was very stable, but the front ring holder was a little bit wobbling. After tightening the four screws on the side, the whole construction was perfectly tight. The lens can be removed by removing two screws on the side. As you see, the sensor is sitting inside of the tube. This lens is designed for objects in distance of 12 to 320 mm. The magnification is up to 240 times, but usually you don't need such a grade for uh, repair works. And a 320 mm distance to the object is also very short, since I'd have to get somehow with the soldering iron between the lens and the PCB. So the best is to use another lens, which is called lens L in this set. It has magnification of up to 60 times, which is more than sufficient, but more important, it can focus on the object at the distance between 9 and 30 cm. That is plenty of space to work comfortably with a soldering iron and other tools. Before putting the lens into the place, the tube has to be inserted into the holder ring. The screws have a plastic protection to avoid any scratches on the tube. The ring itself has such a notch and it has to align with the notch on the tube. After the microscope tube was screwed in place, the lens can be inserted. It has to be fixed with two screws as well. The lens can focus at approximately 9 cm, so I push the microscope down so it has a distance of 9 cm to the base and set the stopper ring on the vertical stand accordingly. There are two clamps which can be screwed to the base plate, so they can hold the samples in place, but I didn't use them since I wanted to have a flat surface for bigger PCBs. Now the cables. This one goes into the base plate and is for powering the LEDs. This angled one goes into the monitor to power that one and the actual microscope. The micro SD card slits quite deep into 
and is a little bit hard to get out again. As you see, it is very near to the back cover of the monitor, so there is not a lot of uh, clearance to grab the card with your fingers, but it works. As I pulled off the protective foil, I realized that it contained two layers. Maybe it would be a good idea to leave one layer on the screen for protection, but it was slightly wider than the screen surface. I tried to realign it, but it was obviously too wide, so I eventually removed it completely. I usually use my own USB power supply for everything, but in this case I used the original power supply just to see if that works, and it did. When plugged in, the microscope turns on automatically. The LED lights up first, and then after about 3 seconds you see the welcome message on the screen, and the microscope is ready to use. Now to the optics. Basically you can use two adjustments wheels to set up the focus. The bigger ring directly on the microscope tube, which can be used to set up the focal length, and this wheel here, which can be used to fine tune the distance to the object. Due to some limitations, those two settings options are almost equal. It doesn't make a lot of sense to have both, but I guess this happens because the chassis and the holder is theoretically exchangeable, and if another holder would have no such adjustment wheel, the focus could be still set directly on the microscope. Anyway, during my work with it I used both options and they did the job reliably and precise. And this is about the focus. The zoom is another question, and this is one of the weakness of this construction. The microscope itself has no option for optical zoom. You have to raise or lower the whole microscope to zoom out or in. As I said, this wheel can be used to focus, but it is actually a very limited zoom. When you use this wheel, you basically try to adapt the distance of the lens to the preset focal length, which you set with the ring on the microscope tube. However, this zoom is very limited. The height um, difference between the lowest and the highest setting is only about 3 cm, and this doesn't give you a lot of zoom. If you need more, you have to release a screw on the vertical stand and move the whole construction up or down. And here is where the stopper ring comes handy, which would protect the microscope from falling down on the base plate. This whole construction doesn't make the zoom very usable, but actually I didn't need the bigger zoom so far and this mini adjustment was enough for my needs, but this could be an issue for one or another. I would like to see such an adjustment wheel which would go seamlessly over the whole height of the stand. The good thing is that this adjustment wheel is on both sides, so it is comfortable to use it for right and left-handed people. The screw, however, is located on the right side in the standard setup, but I think that the upper part can be flipped, so the screw would be on the left side as well. A good point is that the whole construction is quite sturdy. After tightening the screws properly, it was very stable. The display can be uh, flipped and even used almost horizontally if needed. Also here, once again, you can see that the image is quite stable. Even if I rotate the display, the image remains in place and focused. The video recording can be started very easily by pressing the button OK. Don't ask why OK, but it is as it is. Pressing the same button once again stops the recording. As you see, when I press the buttons, the viewport moves a little bit, but with that magnification and focus, it is impressively stable. When pressing M for 3 seconds, you come into the menu where you can select all kind of stuff. I didn't change anything here except resolution. I don't need UHD, nor do I need 120Hz. For my recordings, I used Full HD at only 30Hz, because space on the SD card is more important and without moving objects, even 30Hz is too much. When pressing M briefly, you can switch between the modes. Video, photo, which by the way is made in 4x3 for some reason, and I didn't find any way how to make it full screen, and playback where you can watch everything you recorded. I tested this microscope now a couple of days and I have to admit I was positively surprised. The image quality of the display is very good. The size of the display is large enough. As I said, there is another version of the same microscope with 10 inch display, but I think 7 inch is big enough on one hand and also not too big on the other. 
First of all, the whole setup is already a bit clunky. It would be even clunkier uh, with a bigger display. Also, 10-inch display is probably a bit heavier and could wobble more than the 7-inch model. I don't have the 10-inch model at hand, but purely from the feeling, I'd prefer this smaller display. I worked only with one lens, which allows bigger distance to the object, since I had to get between the lens and the PCB with my tools. The two other lenses allow only up to 3 cm clearance, which is not enough for me, at greater magnification, which I didn't need. And speaking of magnification, I was able to do some soldering work which I never was able to do before. To be honest, even through my camera and the magnifying glass, it was never as easy as with this microscope. It was very comfortable to use and I needed only a couple of minutes to get used to the display and work completely without looking at the PCB itself. Just look at this. Here I am soldering a 0.3mm thin wire to a pin of an SOIC16 chip where the distance between the pins is only about 1.2 mm. Absolutely impossible work for a naked eye, but to my honest surprise, with this microscope it was a child's play. And here I am polishing away the solder mask with electrical tool from a wire, which is less than a half of a millimeter in diameter. Unbelievable! But there were of course not only positive things about it, so let me talk about some negative points, all of which are related to the chassis and not to the optics and the monitor. First of all, I have little space in my workshop, and I need everything to be compact and easy to use. I often put things away when I don't need them. When I was using the scope, these cables were somehow always in the way. I don't know why this solution has been taken. It would be much cleaner to integrate a switch directly into the base with one USB cable, which would go through the vertical stand into the microscope. This remote control with a Y cabling is a mess. By the way, important note here, the power switch on the cable cuts the power instantly to the whole setup. If you push the power button on the screen, the microscope shuts down properly. It also shows you a goodbye message. If you press the power button on the remote control, on the other hand, it turns off everything instantly. This could be a problem if you were recording and forgot to stop the recording before shut down. It could happen that your recording would be not written completely onto the SD card if you just cut off the power instantly, so I would suggest not to use this remote control at all. It is bad. Also the brightness buttons I didn't use once. I cannot imagine that it could be too bright so much that you'd need to turn down the brightness. The next problematic thing for my use case was the length of the beam. It is sufficient for smaller parts, like cell phones, expansion cards and such stuff, but if working with mainboards you will run into a couple of problems. First of all, if the vertical stand is in the way, you obviously have to pull out the beam. It increases the radius and you almost can reach the other side of such a mainboard. But then other issues happen. First of all, the LED lights are too short and you don't reach the other side. This is crucial, since light is everything and without proper lighting you will not be able to see anything. This is not a critical issue, it can be just quite annoying. You can always turn around the PCB and work from the other side, but it's sometimes very uncomfortable, since some parts can be in the way, but you would have to work like that because from another side the PCB wouldn't fit under the microscope. And even if you find a way how to put your hardware, there is another thing, the small base plate. As I was working on this PCB, it was not lying plain, but wiggling all the time, so I had to use some wood blocks to put the PCB on top of them. I mean, I found the way how to work around these issues, but still they are there. So what's my conclusion? Despite of all negative points about the base chassis, the microscope and the monitor itself works great. To be honest, I was amazed how much simpler and faster I could do soldering work, some of which I was not able to do without the microscope at all. Would I use it? Definitely, but I will probably replace the whole chassis and the light with some kind of longer table mounted construction with integrated lights, so I can simply pull it over when I need it. Something without a stand or base plate, so I can work with bigger boards in any direction I need. But if you work only with smaller parts, like cell phones, expansion cards or small Arduino projects, this microscope is a nice tool as is. As I said in the beginning, I got this microscope for review by Endenstar, but I tried to share my honest opinion. I was searching for a microscope anyway, so this was a good opportunity to get my hands on. 
It has its negative size just like everything, but I would say for its price, it's a good option. If you are interested in this product, just follow the links in the description. At least for me it was of great help. I was trying to repair this board first without a microscope and it was pain in the back really. And if I could fully repair it and where this is coming from, this is a topic for another exciting repair and restoration video. So if you are interested, please join me soon in a video about one very interesting PC which I am trying to revive already since quite a long time. And so far, thank you for watching and goodbye.